Yes, I'm riding shamelessly on Jimmy Trice World's review of the Raycon E55. Super shocked the video went so well, but not so shocked at the same time, because he positioned and executed the video very, very well. Props to him, you can go check his video out, but don't leave just yet, because I want to compliment his video by giving you some alternatives that I think are most likely better than the Raycons. Most importantly, they don't cost as much. And I'm talking like one fourth or one fifth of the price. So let's get into it. Selamat pagi. Good morning, everyone. Kenneth here. And today we're going to talk about my favorite earbuds out of everything I've reviewed so far. There's a good 30 to 40 of them in my Tested by Ken playlist. I know it's not too much, but it's decently enough to give you a recommendation. And also, I highly recommend checking the full reviews to know my full analysis of the sound quality, build quality controls, what have you, including the latency test and the call test. In this video, I'm going to discuss the most important pros and cons in categories like best overall value, best AirPod style, best for gaming, workouts. So this is gonna be quite a long video, but worry not, timestamps are down in the description below. Please use it at your convenience. Before we get started, let's see what the Raycon E55 offers for 120 bucks. Going to the product page, right off the bat, you see 36 hours of battery life. But what's more important is each earbuds can play music for 6 hours, which is very decent, I won't lie. It's also got a kind of sculpted casey like design, which could fit great. And then it highlights Bluetooth 5.0, but everything nowadays use it. And lastly, a wireless charging capable case. That's it? Yeah. That's it. They put the IPX4 sweat resistant rating down in the facts section. And if my experience taught me anything, that's not enough for showering. It can barely survive a washing machine cycle. And these better have volume controls because they don't tell you in the website. Again, no volume control at this price, a big no, no. And also the LEDs better not blink every once in a while. The only good thing about the Raycon as a whole is as Jimmy pointed out, they have an insanely good 45 days return policy. And with their one year warranty, if you happen to have charging problems, a dead case, earbuds not charging, you can get it exchanged for free. This never happened to any of my earbuds, but sometimes I hear that in my comments and with these budget earbuds it's basically a gamble whether the company will replace it or not so it's a huge win on the Raycon side but it's 120 bucks it better have that good warranty policy all the jokes aside features wise some of the earbuds here have better latency for gaming better water resistance better mics better chips used inside and most importantly broader sound signature choices whether you want a balanced sound or more detail on the vocals or bass heavy like Raycon, you have the option. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think bass until everything is muddy isn't very appealing in my opinion. And I think I have some recommendation that has thumpy bass but doesn't sacrifice in the vocals. Okay, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Give it a thumbs up if you appreciate what I do, subscribe if you haven't, and let's start with the first and I think the most important category, the best overall value. If I'm going to make a separate video talking about my top five earbuds of 2020, then these earbuds would make it to the list. And number five is Mifa X5. This only goes for 18 bucks, but it's got everything. It's got USB-C, volume controls, good fit, good balance sound, six hours of playtime. The only thing it lacks is a battery indicator on the case and the call quality sucks so bad. But for the price though, I think it's amazing. Moving up to number four, I recommend the QCY T9S or the QCY T4. This $20 earbuds is for you who prefer physical button instead of touch. And with the QCY app, you can customize the controls to your liking, which includes volume control. So it's really great, it sounds good. The case tells you how much battery it has right now. 
I need to charge it, but it's got some volume issue, which makes it either too loud or too quiet in iPhones. Go check out my full review, but it's not in Android though. At number three, we're jumping up to the 50 bucks price range, and there's actually plenty of options here. The Feel T1X S now, Bowmaker Cfi 2 now, Wizard B6, but I haven't reviewed them all yet. So I can't say for sure, but what I have tested is the MPOW T5 or M5. It's got IPX7 water resistance, volume control, it can play music for 10 flipping hours on AAC or SBC, it supports Aptex, it has great case, great balance sound. Actually, I left my MPOW T5 in China, but this Live Protect Heavy is very very similar to it the case design it's pretty big but it has 800 milliamp hour inside so it will last you up to two weeks and yeah overall it's just a really really nice package by the way i also recommend the light protect heavy but this is 90 bucks yeah coming back to the mpow t5 the only downside is it uses micro usb also if you prefer something cheaper if you can find edifier tws one for less i highly recommend that as well it's a great compact ear Buds that perform similar to the MPOW sound wise, battery life wise, but it doesn't have volume control, still uses micro USB, but that's pretty much it. Now, let's move up to the second pick of the year, and that's gonna be the latest Halo GT1 XR, which is basically GT1 Plus earbuds paired with the GT1 Pro charging case. And why is it my second pick? Is because the price to performance ratio is really, really good. For 23 bucks, you get this fairly compact case that has a really beefy 800 milliamp hour battery. That's the same with Life Protect Heavy and MPOW T5, but it's just a little bit smaller. And this thing can last up to two weeks before you need to charge it again, remind you. It has a nice four LED battery indicator in front that turns on when you open the case. The earbuds has the same Qualcomm QCC3020 chip, which is the chip used on basically every earbuds below a hundred bucks that supports Aptex. And talking about that chip, Qualcomm is really killing it right now. It's a very good chip. It's very efficient when you use it on AAC or SBC, which brings almost six hours of playtime in this tiny, tiny earbuds. And it sounds Great. I describe it as natural sounding, but it doesn't go as loud and doesn't pump too much bass. So be careful with that if you need those two aspects. Otherwise, this or the GT1 Plus has been my go-to recommendation and people are happy with it. Now it's time for my number one pick, which stands on the top as the best overall value. And that is the Soundpeats True Shift 2. For $35, it's got everything. IPX7 water resistance, volume control, great sound, great call quality, six hours of battery life, insane 3000 milliamp hour battery, which you can use as a power bank and the earbuds has ear fins so that it will stay for workouts. It also charges with USB-C. The only downside is that it's huge. You really need a big pocket or a sling bag to carry it around. I'm sorry I don't have the thing right now. I gave it to my brother for him to test out, but you can always check out my video. I've talked about everything in detail there. So another model that could also make it to this list is the Halo T19. It has QCC3020 chip. It can do wireless charging. It has infrared sensor to know when you're wearing it and you can customize the controls in the app that includes volume control and it has the stem design for better phone calls and everything only for 32 bucks. I take that in a heartbeat and actually I'll unbox it very soon so stay tuned for that. Okay, I don't know how many minutes we're in right now but honestly I'm not expecting you to watch through the entire video but if you've made it this far, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. That's why I put my best overall value first and I'm trying to be as concise as possible whilst providing you as much information I possibly can. So yeah, we've got a lot more categories to cover. Let's move on to the next one. This is the best half in ear or AirPod style. To be honest, I haven't tested too many here, so I can't talk about the Transmart Onyx Ace or Soundpeed's True Air yet, but those two could be a great contender at 30 to 35 bucks because they both use Qualcomm's chip and that's a good sign 
of a good earbud. In the meantime, here are my recommendations. At number three, there's Realme Buds Air Neo. This is a bit more expensive at around 42 bucks. And honestly, I think that's a little bit too expensive for what it is. But it has something that you don't get on any AirPod style earbuds, and that's gaming mode. It brings latency down to 250 milliseconds, which is good enough. And it also has a good base for something that doesn't seal your ear completely. But for sound quality, I still feel it gets crowded too easily once you throw in some rock music with lots of things going around, but it plays simple acoustics and pops very, very well. It also supports Google Foss Pair if your phone supports it, and you can customize the control in the Android-only Realme Link app, but there's no option for volume control, which is a huge missed opportunity in my opinion. But despite all that, this is the only earbuds my girlfriend kept using of all the earbuds I have here. And she plays Mobile Legends with it. She was happy. And yeah, aside from the price, the only con is the battery life. Two hours and 30 minutes at 50% volume and that's not very good. All right, moving on to number two now. We have the One More ECS 3000 1B. Its problem is it's hard to find, but if you can find it going for 30, 35 bucks, I say get it, it's really great. It's got a physical button with volume control. Its call quality is superbly good. The case design is unique to say the least, and it sounds Okay, maybe a bit lacking in a bass, but for most music that I listen to, pop music, I think it's perfectly fine. For bass though, I can always recommend the trusty Sabbath X12 Ultra as the alternative. I haven't reviewed it yet again since my video last year, but a lot of people have bought it and are happy with their earbuds. It's also got the Qualcomm chip and the IEM design, so it's really good. And now finally, it's time for my top pick of the year. And this is actually the cheapest of the bunch. This is the QCY T7. I haven't made a full review yet, but this is truly a love at first sight. And first listen, for 22 bucks, the build quality is awesome. The case, the earbuds are all matte textured and they feel high quality. Battery indicator is here. It sounds great. It has a capacitive sensor, which automatically pauses the song when you take the earbud out and you can customize the touch control to change volume as well just like any other new QCY products, and that's very good. For battery life, four hours of playtime, USB-C to charge, and the only thing it doesn't have is probably gaming mode, but that's asking too much for the price. At least that's what I think. One particular earbud that I want you to steer clear of is the Xiaomi Mi Air 2 SE. Maybe I'm being too harsh on it in my review, you can check it out, but it just doesn't deliver. The sound signature feels weird to me. Controls suck, just like every other Xiaomi earbuds, and call quality is also one of the worst ones I've found. But yeah, if you want a simple half in ear, I guess it still works. It's just not the best, especially, you know, the price to performance ratio is not good. Anyway, next up, the best for workouts. The thing you have to know here is every earbuds, even the Halo's tiny, tiny earbuds can be used for a simple run. But if you want to be extra sure that the earbuds will stay in your ear no matter what, here's my recommendation. At number three is the Jabbies Firefly 2. The only thing about this earbud is it goes for $99.99. So yes, it's actually the most expensive earbuds in this entire video, but it packs everything. And I mean, everything. You get IP67 water resistance, super heavy duty construction, great sound similar to the Lyprotect Heavy, physical button that includes volume control, and I think they've updated to support both touch and push controls. I've never heard of that before. And this is the only earbud that I've tested with transparency mode. The earbuds can play music for close to 10 hours. The case can wirelessly charge. It's got battery indicator, USB-C. And what about the exercise points, you might ask? While it doesn't have ear fins or ear hooks, it has a rubber strap that you can attach to both earbuds. So you can just hang it on your neck during exercises. So yeah. Worth it for the price if you ask me, but let's see the cheaper options. Which brings us to the number two, 
the Soundpeats True Shift 2. We see this here again because it has ear fins. So it stays very well on top of how great this earbuds really is for the price. So go ahead, watch my full review to know more. Now onto the top pick of the year and it goes to the QCY T6. What makes this really great is the fit. While they may seem shameless to just rip the design straight off the PowerBits Pro, I think it's actually a blessing. The fit here is really, really good. It basically will stay in your ear forever while still being comfortable, not hurting in the back at the tip of the ear hook here and inside the ear where the speaker bulges right here. And when compared to earbuds with ear fins, they usually hurt me after about an hour. So this is a very noticeable upgrade that I can comfortably use for hours and hours on end. And also the battery backs that up. It lasts for six hours and the controls are customizable in the app. It sounds great for the price. The only downside is it charges using MyQ USB and the case it's just like power beats. It's big. <laughs> so actually I wanted to include more categories like best for bass, best for vocals, including the KZ-Z1 and Liprotect Heavy. I love them so much. And also one last thing is the best for calls, but I think that will make this video too long and not fun to watch. So I'll work on it later. Let me know which one you wanna know first. For now, let's move on to the last category for this video. And that is the best for gaming. This one is simple. If you see any earbuds that claims 120 millisecond, 80 millisecond, 65 millisecond, but there's no gaming mode stated, just forget it. I've tested Plextone for Live, for example. It's a great half in ear earbuds, but the latency, the 120 millisecond claim, is the number they got from the chip manufacturer. And in reality, the best it can do is around 350 to 400 millisecond, which is the normal result you should expect from any earbuds operating on Bluetooth 5.0. So we have the baseline here. And there will be three levels of gaming mode. The first one brings the number down to around 350, the second one to around 250, and the third one, which the best I've ever found, is down to around 150 millisecond. Remember, we're talking about real-time games like PUBG here, not in videos like YouTube because there are buffers at play there, so the latency would obviously be better. And for Qualcomm chip earbuds, they normally perform at around 400 millisecond on games and 150 on videos with AAC and iPhone. But when used on aptx this brings the number down to tier 2 gaming mode around 250 on games but you need a phone that supports it so in my recommendation here these earbuds will work whether you use an iphone or an android and on tier 2 we have the qcy t5 and its family t5s t5 pro halo gt1 or gt1 pro Realme Buds Q and its family, including the Realme Buds Air Neo. These are all tier two gaming modes that can bring the latency from 300 to 400 down to 200 to 300. It may seem like a small decrease, but it's noticeable. And in my opinion, this is playable. Unlike the tier three gaming mode, which we're going to discuss in a minute. So pick your own earbuds here. They are all good for gaming. Now, if you're really into gaming with the true wireless earbuds, there's only one earbuds that's at tier one gaming mode currently, and that is the Redmi AirDots S. This came as a surprise to me to see how good the latency was. It's not even advertised for gaming as much. And it's so good, I went into the recording to see if there's any error on my part, but no, everything was fine. These hovers around 150 millisecond in PUBG and sounds perfect for YouTube. It's an even better experience, especially when jumping from the normal 300-ish latency. I'm curious if the QCY T5S will perform to the same level, but we're going to check it out in the future. Now, speaking of tier three gaming mode, that's gonna be the KZ earbuds. The KZ S1, Z1, S2, they somehow has worse latency, normally at around four to 450, and with gaming mode, it only lowers them down to 300 at best. Which again, 
If you notice, it's the same as most earbuds at normal mode. So steer clear of the KZ earbuds if you want to mostly game with it, but for listening to music, they sound great for the price. I'll mention some of them later in my best for vocals video. So that's finally it. These are my favorite earbuds so far. It really took a lot of effort putting everything together, but my point of the video is this. If you are spending more than a hundred bucks, you should really expect nothing less of the basics like USB-C, battery indicator, volume control, battery life, build quality, fit, call quality, the chip used inside, and most importantly, the sound quality. For example, the Jabi's Firefly 2 is a good fit for the price, but the Raycons, not so much. So yeah, I really hope this video helped. I know a lot of choices could be daunting. So I'm trying to cover as much as possible in this video, but again, it's impossible to cover everything. So if you have any suggestions, don't hesitate to let me know down in the comments below. And if you decide to get something from this video, let me know why and how you ended up with that choice. Also, I'll try to put as much links as possible down in the description. It would really help if you could buy from those links. I'm available on Instagram and Twitter. You can follow me there as well. This video is not sponsored by anyone, but some of the earbuds are sent from the manufacturers. That doesn't change the fact that I'm giving you my honest opinion here though. So again, I can't thank you all enough for watching the video until this point. Let me know if you have watched the whole thing by typing hashtag team tested by Ken in the comments down below. Okay, I'm Kenneth and I will see you in the next one. Actually, my mother asked me a couple months back, why don't you review the Raycons? But I just put the idea aside because I didn't know the Raycons were that popular. Anyway, that's weird. Ah, I'm done. So yeah, I really hope this video helped. I know a lot of choices. Whoa, 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 whoa. And if you've got something better than the Raycons, really?